Welcome to Thursday Theology. Today's Thursday Theology is about the purpose of purgatory. So before answering the question about purgatory, let's first talk about heaven. Because the whole purpose of purgatory is the attainment and preparation for heaven. Remember that when we talk about these things, everything is still a mystery. We are living in a natural world talking about supernatural things. I explain it to my students using this kind of mathematical language. We're living in a three-dimensional world and we are talking about a world that is infinite dimensions, okay? We can't even imagine a world that is five dimensions. Can you imagine one that's infinite dimension? It's impossible. And so that's why whenever we talk about these things, we're gonna be able to understand it to some extent, but not for when we talk about heaven or anything that is beyond this world, it's very hard to really get a solid understanding of what it truly is and what it's going to be like. And that's precisely why St. Paul says, I has not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. We haven't seen it. We haven't heard it, but we know enough because in as much as the world beyond the grave is part of our natural destiny, we're going to be able to comprehend it. We are able to conceive it and to some extent understand it because what's beyond this life is somehow natural to where we belong. So let's talk about this idea of sanctification or becoming a saint. You know, this teaching that we become like God, that's what it really means to be sanctified, to become a saint. While this should start on earth, we're supposed to start on earth to become saints, and that's why our goal is to become a saint, it is perfected in as much as our nature can handle Sanctification happens not by our own doing. It happens by something outside of us, that is God. God transforms us, our form, he takes our form and turns it into his form, which is the divine nature. Not completely, of course, we'll never be God, but we will be the image of God, the perfect image of God in heaven. This is a rebirth. God clothing us with a splendor of divine nature. When this happens, sanctification, when we're transformed by God, we are filled with divine light that belongs to God alone. And this light gives us an immediate intuition of who God is. This means we are fully participating in the divine life and sharing in God's enjoyment of happiness. So this idea of uh, knowing God face to face is called the beatific vision. In theological terms, we say it is beholding God face to face. It's not as simple as it sounds. It's not like me talking to you face to face is so different from me talking to you through, through a screen. It's not as simple as that. It is a supernatural marvel of the highest degree. They say that a soul would cease to exist in the sight of the beatific vision if it had even the smallest stain of sin. The unworthiness of that soul would be so immense, so massive before its creator, it would literally not be able to exist before him. That is how powerful the beatific vision really is. This is why we have purgatory. Purgatory is the preparation to be able to see God face to face, to behold that beatific vision. Purgatory is entirely different from hell. Hell is a completely different topic. Purgatory is the place where we achieve that holiness that is necessary to be able to enter heaven. So let's talk about now where this idea of purgatory comes from and where in the gospels Jesus actually has talked about it. So in Matthew 12, 31, Jesus says that he's talking about, um, the sin against the Holy Spirit. He says, all sins will be forgiven, but not anything against the Holy Spirit, neither in this age or the age to come. This implies that there are certain offenses that can be forgiven on earth, but there are certain offenses that can only be forgiven in the age to come. And we consider that purgatory. In addition, we believe that the prayer for the dead does something for us. In 2 Maccabees 12, 46, where it says that Judas Maccabeus made atonement for the dead, that they might be delivered from their sin. From the beginning of the church, we have always honored the memory of the dead and we have always offered prayers for them. Now let's talk about 
the pains in purgatory and what that really means when we talk about purgatory being painful. I mean, St. Augustine says that even the least pains in purgatory, the smallest pains in purgatory are greater than whatever pain is imaginable in this world. Purgatory is painful. Why do souls suffer in purgatory? What's the point? Well, first of all, isn't there something wrong with the fact that sin can be just gotten away with? That wouldn't be fair or just. So purgatory is also a great mercy because nothing unclean can enter heaven. Earlier, I mentioned that through sanctification, we are clothed with the divine nature. Purgatory is like taking a shower before you dress yourself up. The analogy only goes so far though. Purgatory is a purging of sin. It is a purification of our soul so that we can truly comprehend what heaven is. It would be unfitting to enter heaven and see the beatific vision without being fully purified of all our sin, big and small. Purgatory is a spiritual pain because we realize the greatness of our offenses against God. We realize how incredible God is, how much he truly loves us, and how rotten we are for taking that for granted. That all comes to a great realization in purgatory. Spiritual pain can be imagined on this earth as the pain you feel when you lose a loved one, a very close loved one, or the pain you feel when you go through a very bad and painful breakup. That kind of pain reaches the depth of your soul. And sometimes it is worse than physical pain. Purgatory is infinitely worse than any spiritual pain that we experience on earth. Because in purgatory, we realize that we chose to lose God. He wasn't taken away from us. We chose it. We're going to wish that we had never done that. In addition, a moment in purgatory can feel like 10 years on earth. Time is not characterized in the same way. Nevertheless, our prayers for those in purgatory are extremely helpful. And the greatest prayer that we can pray is mass. Offering mass for the souls in purgatory is the best and most fruitful prayer for them. Saying prayers for them is what is going to get them out of purgatory to attain God in heaven to attain the beatific vision. And so I'm gonna end this talk with a short prayer for the souls in purgatory. And that is, may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.